So I'm hearing the Muslim call to prayer now. There is a mosque right down in the middle of uh, lay there. Tibetan Buddhist prayer flags. And here it says, link road to Tsemo Gompa. Gompa is a Buddhist monastery. That is the monastery that I am going to right other side of this uh, hill here which you can walk up to if you like it's not too bad of a hike but it is steep and intense at this elevation So there's an odd-looking structure down there. I can't quite tell if that is something especially old or not. It looks old, but then it's surrounded by this modern fence. Maybe it's some sort of historical building that they fenced off or something. There's something about this high elevation, stark world that uh, I just absolutely love. It feels so just like crisp and clear. You can see for miles. Yesterday was just unreal how blue the skies were. I was hoping that trend would continue, but uh, the coming days are looking like basically like this still beautiful but uh something about that just absolute blue not a cloud sky that is just very dramatic and evocative and makes everything just kind of seem more perfect or something okay there is the semo monastery but then there's this little structure on the hill there that i don't remember from when i was here before let's uh, hike up to it it looks older as soon as you hit the hills man you start to feel that elevation big time So out there is a stupa and I think something more, I forget, but I went out there the last time. I might have actually walked the whole way. It's an interesting walk. And so you can explore in every direction from here north, south, east, west. Tomorrow to Nubra Valley over Cardang La Pass. We'll be going north. I came from the west when I came by road from Kashmir and the landscapes were all absolutely just mind-blowing. And then I stayed in Leh the last time for a while, I forget, at least a week, maybe 10 days. And explored out further east. 
I want to get out there if I can. I have very limited time this time. I'm definitely kind of thinking, should I have stayed longer? Because of course there is so much to see. But uh, for one thing, I've been in the Himalayas for almost a month. Landed in Delhi, 26th October, and then flight from there direct to McLeod Ganj. Today is the 23rd, so in three days, one month, almost the entire time in the Himalayas, other than, I guess it was like four days, I think, in Amritsar, Punjab. And of course I could spend forever in the Himalayas, basically. But uh, there is so much more I want to see. I am really looking forward to my next destination. I'll just say Rajasthan. And also, I am ready for a change from the cold. It is great now. It is fine. I'm warm. I took off my jacket, my scarf. But the evenings are really really intense. As soon as the sun starts to go down, the temperature just plummets, and then when you're trying to uh, sit around in your room instead of being out active, then it is just constant cold. Even with the heater that I now have in my room there, that definitely takes the edge off, but it doesn't warm up the room. It is this big, spacious room, and it is not all that powerful of a heater, and so I was still Cold last night, definitely better than in Kashmir without the uh, heater, but I am looking forward to walking around in my sandals during the day and in the uh, evenings hanging out, you know, in shorts and a t-shirt or whatever, or maybe even having the fan going because it's a little bit too hot, you know, so I'm just uh, ready for the... Uh, change in the weather to more comfortable. So, uh, yeah, whatever this is, it's pretty dang old. Okay. I just hiked up a hill. There we go. Monastery on top of the hill. Let's see if I can... Yeah, definitely. Not lose my elevation gain and uh, just get up there this way. And there it is. I forget now if you can go inside, if it's active. The monks still using it? I think probably, but uh, let's find out. So, the channel icon photo for my YouTube channel that you can see right down below is me standing in front of these Tibetan prayer flags right here. Unless, maybe, they've been replaced since then, 10 years ago. Anyways, that was right up here. And here we go, the view down the other side. There you go, Lei and the palace. Built in 1600. So, you can walk from where I started the day of exploring down at the mall down there and it's a pretty easy walk up to the palace and then you can see there 
more intense getting up here, I'm going to walk back down. And I can now hear chanting coming from town. Sounds like Buddhist chanting. And warming up here took a layer off, so it can be tempting when you leave your cold room and you're totally chilled to walk out with all of your warm stuff on. Long underwear, double pair of socks, etc. But you learn from experience that as soon as you get outside, get active, and especially get into the direct sunlight, that you heat up fast. And so I didn't uh, walk out wearing my long underwear bottoms, and very glad that I didn't wear them because I would have been really miserable, and it is a pain having to take those off because I could be walking around in shorts and a t-shirt right now and be <laughs> fine. So uh, let's investigate the uh, monastery and then do the hike down and go tour the palace. That is going to be amazing. I haven't seen a single other person around here. I guess this is the entrance, okay. Moment of truth. I definitely don't have high hopes that it's going to be unlocked. Nope. Very locked. Probably they come here and unlock it at certain times. Ah, oh, too bad. I would love to see what it's like inside there. I wonder if you can get a tour at some time, or maybe they keep it uh, closed off to tourists. Hello. Eight verses of training the mind with a determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which surpasses even the wish-fulfilling gem. May I hold them dear at all times. So I won't read all of those, but you can pause the screen if you like. Nice that it's in English there and then Tibetan. That is a serious look. So there is the uh, parking lot where you can get dropped off or drive to. I just had the taxi driver drop me down the road a little ways because I wanted to see those other prayer flags and everything. But uh, that makes it very easy to get up here. And then it is quite an easy hike down. So you always want to go clockwise around the Buddha stupas. Is that what's here? Huh, not quite sure why. Go clockwise, I guess, around this. Whatever it is exactly. I'm sure these buildings must be open at certain times for rituals, chanting, meditation. Om Mani Padme Hum. I 
I can just barely see inside there. And so this, of course, makes you think of Tibet. And I would so love to go there. It is high, high on my travel list. The problem is it is difficult. Of course, Tibet is part of China. Since the Chinese invasion in 1950. And... I think it is generally necessary to travel to Tibet through the rest of China. I don't know, maybe it is possible to just fly into Lhasa, but uh, I know that it is a process getting a Chinese visa, first of all, and then Going to Tibet is a separate thing. You would have to get another visa or whatever permit or something for that. And then the real drawback is you can't travel independently there. You can't just show up in Lhasa and then explore around on your own and go wherever you want. You can only go on an organized tour. And that is not how I like to travel. I would certainly do it to see Tibet. Same thing with Iran for Americans. You have to go on an organized tour. So uh, hopefully one of these years I will get to both because they both sound like some of the most absolutely incredible places in the world. Okay, so stairs there and then the trail going down. Tsemo Monastery, popularly known as Namgyal Tsemo Gompa, built by King Tashi Namgyal around 1430, so it is older than the palace. In the early years of the 15th century, the Namgyal Monastery is amongst the most significant Buddhist shrines in Ladakh, while the main structure of the Gompa is in ruins as of today. One of the main attractions of this monastery is a solid gold plated idol of Maitreya Buddha, which has a height equivalent to three stories. Wow. So that's inside of that white building we saw? Oh man, I wish I could see that. Perched atop a mountain behind the Lei Palace, the monastery offers unprecedented views. We have definitely experienced that of the surrounding countryside, including that of the Indus River and the Zanskar Ranges. Numerous beautiful idols of Manjushri and Avalokiteshvara, along with several ancient manuscripts and paintings inside the Gompa. So, maybe I can find out if there is the possibility of a tour inside at some point. So the trail is down there. I came across this way because I wanted to see this strange looking sort of honeycomb building right around the corner here. Well, I was trying to go straight across to it and avoid more uphill, but uh, got to get a little ways further up there now. It looks really old. Look at that. I wonder if that is even older than the monastery, 15th century. This could definitely be older. Not sure how you're supposed to get up there, but 
So it looks like this will work. Man, there is just so much to explore around here. You could spend many days just lay and ride around within walking distance. So, looks like that is the inside of the structure there on the right, and it fell away. Because this is the outside wall. Maybe earthquake or who knows. Well, that's an outside wall there by the looks of it. So what the heck was this? Seems like it was really skinny. Okay, let's get down to the palace. <laughs> 